Hi crafty folks, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to share some die cutting and embossing colored cardstock and some other ideas. So let's jump right in. I have this fern leaf die from Crafty Meraki that I recently got. I have some lightweight cardstock and I'm going to jump right in and show you some photos of the finished cards that I made. Um, there were some trial and error and some issues, but I'm going to leave all that stuff in there so you can see my process and how I came to these finished cards. So I'm first going to open up this brand new die um, and figure out which dies I want to use where I'm basically just going to cut a bunch out of these two colors of cardstock. Um, I know sometimes I struggle with how to use colored cardstock or how to use my pattern paper so when I come up with ideas on how to use up this stuff um, I try and share it with you guys because I have the suspicion that you guys are in the same boat. So you can see here I cut a bunch of them out, a couple of each color, and I'm loading them up in this embossing folder. This is um, Angled Mosaic from Alta New. It's a 3D embossing folder and I thought these would look cool with some dimension and some interest. So I run these through off screen in my die cutting machine and you'll see here this was kind of my first fail. This paper was way too thin and very delicate with the die and it was just falling apart. Um, so this was like my first mistake. I made it work. Um, as you can see in the final cards, but look at this. I really had to piece it back together. So I'm thinking, mm, yeah, with this die cut and these delicate, low, lightweight paper, it was not working. Now here's my second mistake. Um, I used these micro dots, and again, they were just so delicate that they stuck so well to these micro dots, and then it was like Hot Mess Express trying to pull them off. You can see they're like... <laughs> just tearing apart, sticking all over my fingers. Oh my gosh, it was a mess. So in my mind, I'm thinking right off the bat, like this die is too delicate and this paper is too thin. So I need to try it with a thicker paper because yeah, mistakes were made. Look at this. It's just, oh my gosh, it was so frustrating. Um, but I persevered <laughs> and I pieced them back together, stuck them all over this card base. It's 110 pound uh, Nina Classic Crest Solar White, and then I just trimmed off the excess, and I was like, okay, done with this one right now. I'm going to try something else. So, um, yeah, do yourself a favor, first of all, maybe don't emboss such a delicate die cut, um, and definitely don't use, like, 65-pound weight paper, whatever I use there. So here I have a couple card panels here, and I'm thinking, well, if I use thicker card stock then maybe it'll work better. So this is 110 pound Nina Classic Crest Solar White panels and I'm doing some ink blending with my blending foams and a couple Distress Oxides. I have Salvage Patina and Evergreen Bow. I'm kind of just, you know, matching that colored cardstock. I just kind of have that color in my mind. So I do some very simple ink blending here with the intention of trying this exact same thing again on a thicker cardstock to see if it fares better through the embossing. So I'm just doing some blending. I'm not really trying to be super concise. I'm not even trying to color the whole uh, card panel because I don't think I'm going to be using all of it and I don't really need it to be a perfect blend because I know I'm going to come in and kind of splatter it up a bit. So this is a little um, bottle of or spray bottle of water that I have with Perfect Pearls in it. So it kind of leaves this nice shimmer behind. And I'm just gonna sop it up with some paper towel um, because that's gonna activate the Distress Oxide. That is a water reactive ink and it kind of puts all these cool, you know, distressed water droplet looks all over it. Um, so that was step one. And then I decided I wanna go even further uh, with the splatter. So I grabbed this little Yuli water color set that I have. Um, I purchased those six in that little tin and then I also purchased that half pan of um, charcoal black and I'm using my water brush pen just to kind of activate the inks and then I'm going to put black and one of these shimmery gold splatters all over it. So I just put a little bit, I put too much water in there so you can see I'm sopping it up. Um, if you get too much water then you get too big of blobs which I didn't want. So I'm just kind of smearing some of that on this acrylic block and then using the water brush pen to put the flicker um, splatter all over the panel. So I'm doing it with the black and then kind of wiping off the brush and coming in, turning to the other side of the acrylic block and then doing a splatter with one of the more, I think it's the champagne color. So it's kind of like a 
I don't know, like iridescent, very pale gold or silver. So I'm just going to hit it with my heat tool because I'm impatient. Um, and then I'm going to die cut from this panel um, with this big die and uh, tape it down and run it through my die cutting machine. So again, this is my trial and error, trying it now with a thicker card stock that should hopefully fare better in the embossing machine. And I'm sitting there looking at this panel and I'm like, that's really pretty. Don't wanna waste that. So I'm gonna set that aside and you'll see what I do with it in a minute. Um, but I'm using that mint tape just to kind of pull it out. This is very delicate. The little stem is no joke, it is tiny. So um, yeah, I'm gonna run it through. I'm gonna see what happens, poke out these little bits. Um, and I'm gonna see if it fares better in the same angled mosaic embossing folder. So I'm gonna run it through off screen, hoping because it's thicker that it will do better than the little lightweight cardstock. And it did, but as you can see, that stem is so thin. And when you put the indentations of the hardcore 3D embossing, it really isn't a fan. So that one was definitely delicate as well. It did kind of split down the stem but it wasn't a super mess like the lower or like the other more lightweight cardstock. So here you can see I continued the ink blending down the panel and then ran that panel through the embossing machine because I didn't want to waste that gorgeous cardstock as well. So now I attached everything to three card bases. So now I have three card bases of these cool embossed ferns and then I'm flipping through my um, sentiment book. This is my storage solution. I have all these little baseball card pockets to hold all these ready to go die cuts and various different pattern papers and metallic cardstock and you know all sorts of variations. And I'm just kind of taking out different pieces and kind of laying them um, across the different card bases to see how I want to finish the cards and stick around in a moment. You'll see the finished cards and how they turned out. Um, but I'm just kind of going through not really with anything specifically in mind. Um, I kind of just look at the finished panel or the finished card base and figure out what kind of works for that space and what works for that composition. So you may have noticed my style. I don't really plan in advance. I kind of wing it as I go. This one, I felt like this die cut worked perfectly in the space. So I put You Are Awesome on there um, and you can see that cool shimmer from the splatter. Then this one, I just did a gold metallic hello there because I felt like that was, um, I don't know, bold enough to kind of stand off the background. And then this is a cool LDRS uh, strip that I did some ink blending directly on white cardstock with a white embossing. So that's how they turned out. Um, I hope you enjoyed the trial and error and got some ideas. Um, I think if you use a thicker die or if you're just really careful and don't mind kind of piecing it back together, um, that this method works great. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time. Bye.